Oh yes, in this video we're going to go over how to find the volume of solid of revolution when we end up with an actual hole in that solid. Basically, we're going to have a region that is not flush against what we're revolving about. Let's check this out. So we're told find the volume of the solid made by revolving the following bounded region about the line y equals negative 2. Ooh. Okay, let's see what that's all about. So I've got y equals x squared, x equals 0. That's how I know to not draw out all of y equals x squared. y equals 0, so that's bounded down here. And then x equals 2. Ah, okay, so it's kind of this curvy looking thing. That's interesting. And we're going to revolve about y equals negative 2. y equals negative 2 is way down here. Now, if you notice, up to this point, you've been revolving things directly about the x or y axis or lines that bound that region. So if we now revolve this thing about y equals negative 2, there's all of this gap right here. So we end up with an image, right, that kind of looks like this. And so you end up with this hole right here, like right in the middle of the solid. Now, you don't have to be able to draw this out every single time. I'm just showing it to you right here in this particular example. So what does that mean? Well, it changes what we're doing here, right? And here's how it changes it. You're not just going to find one radius, but you need two. Let me show you why. So if we just take the rectangle, the normal representative rectangle we've been doing, from the outermost edge to the axis of rotation like so. What ends up happening is we rotate that and we end up with a disc. But inside of that disc, if you think about it, you get a hole for this entire section right here. Right? So you have that and then you have this part right here that causes a hole. So if you rotate this thing, you get your normal disc with a hole in the middle. That's why it's actually known as the washer method. And again, that hole is caused by this gap right here. It's caused by all the part that the area of that region is not actually touching. So it's kind of like you're rotating like this. And when I rotate an object sideways, maybe you can see that, like this, you've got all this gap in between. And so only where this area touches do we get volume. OK, so we get this washer. Let's think about this simply, though. right? Think about it. Keep geometry basic. We're still rotating with a radius perpendicular to the axis of rotation. And we want the area here. Right, we want the area of that part because this is the hole. And then this is still dx. So the area of that, if you think about it, you have this massive radius, and then you have this tiny little radius in here. We'll call that uh, lowercase r. That's it. That's like the radius of the core, if you will. Well, the area of the entire circle would be pi big R squared. That includes the core, the hole. Then we're going to subtract out the little circle. Right, so the area of that ring would be the area of the whole circle minus the area of the tiny one. If I multiply that area of this times the thickness, I'd get the volume of that washer. I wouldn't get the volume of the stuff on the inside because I'm just taking the area of the washer and basically stacking it up or stacking it over x far or x high, if you will. And that's the volume. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add up infinitely many of those washers. So we end up then integrating from left to right. And then you've got your pi already in there. Generally speaking, you're going to see the formula written as pi times integral from a to b. Pi is factored out. And you'll see radius squared minus little radius squared. Be very, very careful. Make sure it's radius squared minus r squared and not radius minus radius. All of that squared. That is very, very wrong. right? So this is correct. Now, let's just use this idea here. So we've got big radius. That's going to be the distance from the outermost part to the axis of rotation. That's this minus that, right? Top minus bottom. So this minus that, keep things positive. So big R is going to be equal to x squared minus this, which is negative 2, minus a negative 2. So that ends up being x squared plus 2. Don't memorize that as needing to be addition or subtraction. Just do the subtraction. That minus that gives you the distance. Little r is going to be the distance from the outermost edge of the hole. So that would be the distance from, I guess, well, the edge of the region that is closest to the axis of rotation. So this is little r. That's little r, that's big R. Little r would be that minus that, or 0 minus a negative 2, which is equal to 2. Get your big radius and your little radius situated, and then just plug it in. So we get pi times the integral from a to b. Well, what would that be? 
Well, we're starting at x equals 0, and then we're sliding the washers all the way over to x equals 2. Nice. Big R squared, well, that's going to be x squared plus 2 squared minus, just using that template, little r squared, 2 squared. And that's it. So even though that's a little heavier than a disk method, we got this thing. And it's, it occurs, we get this washer when we have a hole. Right? And we have that hole because the area is not flush with what we're revolving it about. Okay, let's go ahead and integrate. So we're going to be integrating pi from 0 to 2. That's going to be squared out. You'll get x to the 4th plus 4x squared. Remember, you're foiling. Plus 4. Minus 4. Ooh, okay, well, that's at least a little nice. So when I go to integrate this, that becomes zero. So I'm just integrating this part. So I'll get pi times x to the fifth over five plus, this will be x cubed over three times four, or four thirds x cubed. And that's it from zero to two. That's the neat part is the integration is actually not typically that bad with these problems. So we'll plug in. We get pi times two to the fifth is 32 over five. 2 cubed is 8 times 4 is 32 thirds. Minus, when I plug 0 into each of these, I'll get 0. And 0 to the fifth and 0 cubed times pi is still 0. Let's simplify this down. 32 fifths, well, we're going to multiply that by 3 to get the common denominator fifteenths. That's 96 fifteenths. Plus, this is 5 that we need to multiply top and bottom by. So that's going to be 160 fifteenths times pi. And 96 and 160 is 256 pi all over 15. Oh, yeah, the exact number I would have guessed, too. Nice. Okay, so here's the thing. That really went over the concept pretty well, but I just want to generalize it for you. Just in general, what happens when you've got two curves that you're revolving at about an axis of revolution that is not flush along it? So let's just take the x-axis, for example. Let's say we're revolving about that axis right there. What we always need to do, again, is draw in the radius from the innermost curve to the axis of rotation. That's going to give you the hole, right, when we revolve this. And then draw in the radius from the outermost curve to the axis of rotation every single time. And that's going to be big R, and this will be little r. And it does not matter what the axis is you're rotating about. You're always taking f of x and subtracting the axis value. or if the axis value is above it, as we'll see later, we're taking that value and subtracting f of x. We'll see how that affects things. But for now, in general, you get your outermost radius. And in that case, we write it down. It's going to be capital F of x in this case. In this case, minus 0, whatever that y value is. Lowercase r is going to be g of x minus 0. And so now we have our outer radius and our inner radius. I'm going to remind you that what's happening here is you no longer have a disk. When you revolve this thing, you've got a hole caused by that whole well, lack of area being filled in. And just really this part you want. So you take all of this minus all of that is what you end up with when you square them out. So you got your axis of rotation, but you've got a hole in the middle there that you got to account for. So conceptually, you've got dx and you've got big R happening here. And then you've got little r e happening right in there. Let me make that a different color so it sticks out. Little r right there. And so we're finding the area of all of this. And that's going to be pi times big R squared. That gives you the area of the whole circle, including the part we don't want. We'll subtract out the area of the circle we don't want, pi times little r squared. Then we're going to multiply all that by dx. That gives us the volume of that very, very thin washer. And if I integrate that from a to b, that would be from like this x value of a to this x value of b, we're stacking those washers up from left to right. That's it. That's the concept. So in general, just make sure you know what your outer radius is and inner radius are, I guess I should say, um, any time you have a region that is not right up against the axis you're rotating about. All right. I'll see you in the next video. We'll do a few more practice exercises. I can't wait to see you there. Peace.